Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Roquan Smith. And Roquan, I got to start here. Have you always had that smile? Like your smile, your teeth, <laughs> that can't be real, right? Is that real? Yeah. Dude. That's <laughs> very, genuine? Yeah, that's genuine for sure. Dude, I thought those were veneers. I was like, he's <laughs> got the best smile. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now we got it out. I like have been meaning to ask you that question for like weeks now, and mm -hmm. I just said, well, I had you. I had to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, off the top, I mean, how much are you enjoying being part of this franchise? I'm enjoying it a lot, man. Like, since I first got here, you know, from, like, the first meeting I had here and to the first time I had my encounter with the guys in the locker room, it's been, I felt like it's just been a genuine welcome, and, like, I'm excited to be here, and I think the guys are excited as well, and I think we're just growing together. Yeah. One thing that stuck with me, I thought it was kind of funny, it was, like, your first week here, I think, and I went down to get dinner, as I'm apt to do. There it is. You, <laughs> you know, never miss I'll, a meal, a friend never, of the especially a free meal. <laughs> and, and you were going in line, and you were like – you all got salmon here? <laughs> like, you have salmon? And, and her cafeteria worker, Brian, he was like, yeah, we have salmon, like, all the time. And you were like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And it just seems like you really, like, this, this franchise, the way it's run, that you are really appreciating it i guess yeah absolutely man i think things are handled like uh first class you know putting the players for first whatever it takes um for the players to uh, have those guys have those guys be successful i feel like the organization is all about that so when that those things happen it makes you want to go even harder for the uh, organization so i'm just excited to be here and excited for all the great things that come with it so on the football field you know, you made a pretty quick impact uh it's a different just having you out there. What do you think of uh, Mike McDonald's defense, um, the way that he runs it and, and how it's similar or different to what you've done in the past? Uh, Mike, yeah, I, I enjoy playing in Mike defense. Uh, it's very different from what I was playing in Chicago earlier this year, but uh, some things that I've done in the past uh, from what the Fangios, the Decides, the Chuck Paganos, I think it's uh, kind of similar under that tree. And I uh, truly enjoy playing in that defense, and uh, I played in that defense in college as well. And the way he calls the game, you know, he's not afraid to uh, dial things up, uh, play coverage, and, you know, let his playmaker make plays. So I have a great deal of respect for anyone that uh, don't call the game scared and you know, willing to take chances. I love that. It's just, so it's different than what you did in Chicago throughout the year, but then you get here and like you pick it up right away. You played, I think, 60% of the snaps in your first game, then 100% game two. Like, didn't take you long at all. How were you able to like pick it up so quickly? especially considering it was a big change from what you've been doing the rest of the season. Yeah, I think it just comes down to uh, attention to detail and concepts and just knowing concepts. And think football, uh, it's all about concepts. There's only so many ways that you can play certain coverages. And so just thinking about that and knowing the terminology that uh, we use here and picking up on those things and also with the help of the teammates helping me out, saying little things that uh, give me great reminders out on the field and allow me to play fast. So I think it's a credit to those guys, the coaching staff, and everyone else. You were obviously a big time leader in Chicago, but whenever you come to a new team, you know, you're New Jack, you know. <laughs> so how did you go about kind of uh, assimilating into the team and, and building that kind of trust with your teammates? Yeah, absolutely. I think it starts off, you just have to be yourself. And I said, you know, coming here, I don't know how to be anyone but myself. And when I got here, being myself throughout the uh, week, throughout my time here, and I think guys uh, adapt to that. And, you know, guys tend to, like, lean towards that and, you know, want authentic people. And I feel I'm that. So I, I wasn't trying to do anything special, just going in each and every day, busting my tail, being who I am. And I think guys tend to flock to that. Now, you've got the locker right next to PQ. You two are kind of joined at the hip. What have been your impressions of seeing him up close and personal? Yeah, he's uh, he's. A, I didn't really know much about him. Like, obviously, I knew him as a player drafted right. coming out of LSU when he first came out. We uh, were friends on, like, social media, but never really talked a lot or anything like that. But, yeah, I think he's a real cool, down-to-earth guy. You know, he wants us both to be successful. And normally, you know, you don't really meet a lot of guys like that, high-level guys. And, you know, he don't care who makes the play, just like me. And I think it's a great uh, tandem. And I'm just excited for everything we uh, have in store. And I think he's just a great down-to-earth guy. Now, do you like to fish? Because PQ's 
big time fisher. <laughs> so <laughs> funny thing, I used to actually growing up, I lived in, I grew up in a really small town in uh, Southwest Georgia, yeah. very small town. Um, no stoplights, anything like that. <laughs> so all I did growing up was like after school, fish, 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 like going off to little creeks, going off to little ponds and whatever. <laughs> so we definitely have to plan this off season to get out, throw the line out there a little bit nice. and see who really has the skills. <laughs> that's, <laughs> nice, that, nice. That's awesome. Last year, we we kind of spent some time with PQ during the off season, did a video feature on him. So I think we're gonna have to do a follow up this year. The two of you guys, the see fishing who, competition, yeah, the fishing competition yeah. to see who ends up winning that fishing competition. <laughs> so uh, last week on the podcast, we had Gino Stone on, and uh, he talked about playing behind you and the addition that you've been to this defense. And he was like, I'll be honest, you know, like the guys in the secondary were getting kind of mad because like there's no tackles left for us. Like he's gobbling all the tackles up uh, in front of us. Is that like how much pride do you take in that? I mean, you're not leaving anything for those guys behind you. You got to spread the wealth a little bit. Man, it's <laughs> it's like it's hard. It's hard to get it myself for me and PQ with the big monsters we have up front, <laughs> having those guys eating up everything. So we literally just trying to get the scraps and uh, you know what, whatever's left for the secondary, maybe some bones or something. They can have that. <laughs> but yeah, like we're we're trying to get it all because the big guys are stingy. But you know, as long as we play good team defense, we all get the guys down. Like you know, that makes me happy regardless of who making the plays but yeah it's it's exciting man playing on a defense with like so many good players and guys that so many guys that do so many great things there's already been a lot of uh talk about how you and pq really feed well off each other and complement each other well how do you feel that on the field that that you two kind of work in tandem yeah man it, it's crazy like just how in sync we have been like uh with just playing with each other only a couple weeks and i just can only imagine like well, the more time and like how he see the game and how I see the game. If I see something coming, not notifying him, and he sees something notifying me, and I think it's just like us being on the string together and playing complimentary football. And I think when we do that, man, the sky's the limit for us too. Uh, was it at all? PQ kind of talked about this when the trade first went down, and he was saying, you know, on Twitter, people are hitting me up like, oh, what's this mean about my future? You know, he's going into his fifth year next year. Um, oh no, fourth year next year, fifth year after that. You know, and obviously you. And, and you've been an established guy and all that stuff. But I get the sense that there was never any awkwardness about like what your addition meant for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think he ever felt any type of way since I since I've been here. The guy's been trying to help me. I have questions. I ask him. The guy's been trying to help me adjust, yeah. do anything that I, uh, he can to help me become a better player. Because at the end of the day, when you really think about it, if one eats, we all eat. And like you know, right. if he's successful, then I'll be successful. I'll feed off that as well. And like you know, he make big plays. You know, I'm there the first one to hit him on the helmet. Like good stuff, bro. Like happy for him because at the end of the day, when you're genuinely like happy for. Uh, each other's success you don't really worry about what people on the outside say because that's what people on the outside try to do like try to come in and divide guys and do things like that but we can't let those things happen we just have to focus on you know continuing to getting better and just growing together and you know there's enough out there for for us both so I'm as long very as the confident. defensive tackles don't take it yeah <laughs> so obviously Sunday's game didn't go the way that you wanted uh and, you know, you had the lead, and, and, and Jacksonville ends up coming back and, and winning that game. And earlier in the year, obviously, you weren't here. They, they had some struggles late in games, and I know that probably you've heard about that, and, and that's been a point of emphasis. You know, from your perspective, just how disappointing was that result, and, and kind of what do you think needs to – needs to change to avoid that happening again at any point this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. That sucked. You know, definitely when the offense give us a lead like that, you never want to let those guys down. And I think just the big picture looking at it, I think from that game, you know, we clearly didn't play to our standard. Uh, no one on defense, including myself, there was plays out there that I wish I could have back, and I'm sure everyone out there wishes the same thing. And I think it's just about looking each other in the mirror or looking yourself in the mirror more so and knowing what it takes to get the job done and whatever it takes week in and week out to play the best version of yourself. That's what we're going to need to win these games deep in the uh, season, December and January, because that's when it really counts. And I think if we do that, and I think it's a great group of guys in there who knows that last week wasn't a performance that we had wanted to put out there. So look, good thing about being in this league, we got a great opportunity this week and just looking forward to it and bouncing back and showing, you know, who we truly are and not having any more letdowns because we can't afford to do that and there's no place for that uh, with this Ravens defense. Like I, I have felt and I felt this 
even before you arrived, and then once you got here, this just kind of solidified it in my mind. This defense is good. Like, you got guys up front. You got a lot of investments in the, in the secondary. You have guys coming back, and Marcus Williams is going to be coming back, and uh, Kyle Hamilton missed the last game. Like, you and PQ in the middle. Like, I feel like this defense is, is, is good, really good. And games like the, the, you know, the fourth quarter of Sunday are the, the anomaly in my mind versus like the expectation. Um, is that how you see it too? I mean, like, do you have the, does, does a game like Sunday shake your confidence at all in the quality of this defense? Oh, absolutely not. It don't shake our confidence at all. It's just like we just know any time in this league, if you don't come out and play your best, you can be beaten. And, like, that's a, a good wake-up call for us, I feel like, and letting guys know that, hey, we have to bring it each and every week, and it starts uh, early in the week with practice, and guys just have to, you know, bring their best every day because if you don't, you see what happened on Sunday, and we can't afford for that to happen. And I think that me- message has been echoed throughout to the guys, and the guys know how important, how each week is important. Now, it's an extremely high bar, but some people, myself included, kind of <laughs> get like Ray Lewis vibes from you, right? And I know you've only been here a month, so it's probably not fair. But like, <laughs> you just kind of get like first impressions and, and vibes, right? Like, you know, sideline to sideline, physical player, natural leader, all that stuff. Like, was Ray somebody when you were a kid growing up in your small town in Georgia that you looked up to? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, got a great deal of respect for Ray. I'm um, no Ray. You know, that guy, you know, Hall of Famer, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest to ever do it. But I definitely looked up uh, to Ray, Patrick Willis, you know, those guys. Those guys played the game at a very high level. And a kid down there used to always look at Ray like uh, – motivational speeches him talking <laughs> yeah. about his push-ups he used to do all the time <laughs> and just everything about effort and I pride myself on effort as well you know never you know taking a play for granted because you never know which play will be your last you know those are some of the things I just picked up from him like just way back you know when I first started playing the game so yeah I have a great deal of respect for the guy and you know hopefully have a career as close as to what he had because man that's, that's pretty big time now I think when you first got here you said there was a you'd had a little bit of contact with him like you've spoken to him before, have can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, it was basically uh, like down at a camp. I think this was more so like my sophomore year in college. Yeah, went down to one of his camps. I think it was at like IMG or something like that, and I uh, went down, hung out uh, at his camp. I was watching film and stuff. It was a big group, so you know you just try to take the little time that you can get uh, yeah. from someone. You know, and he's very busy, and a lot of people uh, want, want his time. So yeah. yeah, you just try to do that. But got a great deal of respect, kind of watch the guy from afar and you know always just you know seeking and uh any advice you can get from a guy like that man yeah. it means the world i have to imagine that when you're like watching tape with ray lewis and even when you're in a crowd you're kind of like like oh my <laughs> god i'm trying not to freak out <laughs> trying to take notes you know <laughs> was it like that for you uh you was just, just more so just trying to soak it soak it all in yeah. i'm like more of a live in the moment type guy yeah and just try to soak everything in during the moments you know knowing that this is a great opportunity to be yeah. in this guy's presence but also not letting the moment get too big and also just trying to take everything that you can from it yeah it's funny that you mentioned patrick willis because i think i said this to you that you and pq i was like could that be patrick willis and navarro bowman like you remember that tandem yeah for, in the 49ers defense was nasty yeah and had a nasty d line like yep. yeah and I, I yeah i thought of that uh for sure so yeah we got we got we got some work to do yeah. man because those guys you know had a heck of a run did a lot of great things uh together but i feel like you know the sky's the limit for me and pq as well yeah. we hone in each and every week you know and just always continue and try to get better and not letting Complac- complacency slip in right mm-hmm. so let's go to the trade um when you get added here and i'll tell you how we found out and a lot of people ask us did you guys know did you know the trade was going to happen and i say no i saw it on twitter uh you know, <laughs> <laughs> we were in the building and we saw it on twitter and that's how the news broke so how did you find out like what was take me to that day and that you know what was that like for you? Yeah, it was actually pretty crazy uh, how it happened. Uh, I'm definitely uh, very excited, you know, to be here. But it was basically I was uh, at the facility. So Mondays uh, was not our off day as it is here. So going into the facility Monday, reviewing the film, uh, how to walk through and uh, things of that nature, ate lunch and as I was finishing meetings and everything, I, I went in the locker room just like saying because I was waiting around to head to a massage and just hanging around in the locker room, waiting a couple minutes, letting it bypass, go switch out into my sweater. And then as I'm leaving the locker room, the guy, a guy tapped me and said, hey, uh, the GM would like to see you upstairs. I was like, oh, is it like, is it urgent or, or anything like that? And then uh, he was like, uh, 
because I said I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm in like a rush or is it urgent? He needs he needs to see me today. And then he was like, uh, yeah, he does. <laughs> and then so I'm like, oh, he said he said this needs to be done uh, in person. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, what is this? I'm thinking maybe it's like contract talks or something like that because he told me. Uh, way back in the season, like he wasn't, uh, we was we was gonna talk at the end of the season and things along those lines. So I'm like thinking, oh maybe he want to start back up uh, with the contract talk. So you know, I'm going up there. No, had no incline, like incline, nothing that made me think that uh, I was getting traded because like I when I asked requested it early in the off season, said no, want you to be here, gonna uh, plan to uh, work around this and we're gonna get something done at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But uh, go up there and then I see him and the head coach uh, sitting in the office and uh, you know shake their uh, both of their hands just like men and uh, get in there and then he was like yeah man um, this is like the tough part of the business um, you know so I'm like oh crap my heart dropped so I'm like <laughs> Oh, tough part of the business. This got to mean like a trade or something. Like <laughs> then my boy had just got traded like mm-hmm. the week prior, and so I'm like, man, what could this possibly be? And then I knew right then it was a trade or something. And so then he was going on like, how much you appreciate everything I've done for the, you know, the organization <laughs> and how I handled the situation and things like that. So I'm literally sitting there just waiting, like, oh my god, just please say the team. I don't know where I'm going. For. <laughs> so it was like two minutes. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. Like I'm like, is it where? Is it, I'm going to LA am I going to the middle of the nowhere <laughs> am I going to like New York like you have no idea am I going to Atlanta so yeah, like right. I'm literally my mind is like all over the place I'm just like oh my god where is it going and then he eventually said it like uh to the Ravens so I like he said the Ravens so I was like oh the Ravens and I'm like hey that's a good team I knew it was a playoff contender guys that you know do things the right way, first-class organization, knows what it takes to win and do, do a lot of winning. So I was like that. It was very emotional, though, the uh, first time because it's just like, man, Chicago, that's all I knew. It's right. all I ever known since I've uh, been a pro. But, yeah, man, and then it happened. So, you know, said some goodbyes. A lot of people was gone out of the building by the time I finished up up there. So, like, said goodbye to the people that I seen in there and then just drove on home and, like, man, you know, then – uh, Eric called and uh, stuff like that. Hardball and Dan, you know, talking to those guys uh, on my on my way home. And man, like next day, next morning, got up. Well, t- that night, I had to pack a bag and you know get going. So yeah, it was a, it was definitely a whirlwind, man. But you know, looking back on it, I'm very excited that it uh, it happened. I'm happy to be where I'm at right now. And you know, I think it's just life at the end of the day. You know, you fear change sometimes, but those be the best uh, things that can happen for you sometimes in life. Yeah, so it like just so listeners or viewers, if you don't know this, you're your own agent. You know, you represent yourself. So like, there's no one that's giving you a heads up that this is happening, which is probably part of the reason that it's kind of such a crazy circumstance uh, when you when you get tapped on the shoulder and say, "Hey, the GM needs to see you." You gave a really insightful answer uh, at the podium here about being your own agent, and I'm just curious, like, why you decided to do that. Um, and how difficult that decision was. And, you know, people have asked Lamar about it, and there's been criticism. You know, you get criticized, you should have an, your own agent, or you should have an agent, all that stuff. Could you just shed a little bit of light on your thought process on that? Because I thought you, you just have an interesting view of that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the thing about criticism and things like that, people are going to criticize you throughout your life, regardless of what it is. If you have an agent, if you don't have an agent, people just pick and choose things that they want to uh, – criticize you about and I think that's life and that's human beings and that's human nature so people always just trying to find something to maybe make their voice important or just make make a story about something I just think it's like guys want to be at the table transparency so you know exactly how people feel about you and not like just hearing it through a second third party or things like that where it's like oh this coming from your agent that the GM said this and you know things can happen where it's like guys do each other favors like hey this or that and you know I never wanted to be a part of that and when I uh got rid of my agent after like my second year in the league um I just thought like maybe with the money and things like that I can you know give that to like charity I can do that do things for family uh with those fees and um it's also I think I have a team of advisors just like any GM or anyone else uh, like any business have like I have my guys that, you know, been through these type situations before. Um, and we sit at the round table and we come together, you know, have a great plan. And, you know, I trust those guys and those guys have a lot of uh, insight and a lot of experience. And I think it's no different from what a GM has when he's at the table like 
those guys have their salary cap guys. They have their, you know, their contract guys. So it's all about, you know, just having a team and what making the best possible team for your success. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting. Whenever somebody, you know, becomes public knowledge that somebody has requested a trade, there's always a perception of that from the outside of like, oh, what's this guy about or whatever, right? And like since meeting you, you know, you don't, you never know what to think from afar, right? And meeting you, I'm like, it's hard to kind of imagine, like, you're just such a straightforward, like, guy, you know, and, like, a team dude, you know what I mean? That, like, I don't know, I guess it was um, hard for me to imagine, I guess, I, I don't know, but, like, can you take me through that process and, and how difficult that was for you? Because the Bears were a team that drafted you, and you had a lot of history there, you know what I mean? And, like, you want to do all that's good for the team, too, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, you definitely want to do that and being a team player. And I think if you ask any guys in that locker room in Chicago or anyone around the facility at Chicago, everyone had a great deal of respect for me yeah. based on just the way I handle things day in and day out, you know. But at the end of the day, you have to do what you feel is best for you and right. your career while also doing what's best for the team. But you can't settle for things that you know if you feel like you're worth something and someone else sees you as something else. So that's their opinion and that's the way they feel. And hey, you're entitled to that. That, but you have right. to stick by your guns and do what you feel is best for you because you only have one career and you know once the career is over hey it's over there's no looking back yeah that and that's gonna be hard for a player to deal with when a team is like you know what we don't see it right now you know and then like you come to a team like the Ravens who like give up a lot to get you it's like man this team is like embracing me they want me like that has to feel really good on the back end of that you know what yeah I mean? absolutely uh because you would you would think you would think that way about the team that uh initially drafted <laughs> right. you but uh you especially know especially when you lead the league in tackles and yeah such. and like with a new regime and everything like that you know you never know how they feel about right. you and like you're not their guy in a sense so you know they got to feel like they got to do what they feel is best for them but you know being here you know knowing a team that gave up so much and see so much in me uh what i see in myself man it, it makes you want to go even harder and uh um, play the game the way the game deserves to be played regardless I'm doing that regardless but it just right. gives you that extra little fire and man it's just it's just awesome to be here obviously the elephant in the room is you're a free agent after the season <clears throat> and it just seems like you fit in as we're talking about so well it seems like you love it here the Ravens love it here how do you see the contract process playing itself out over the course of the off season? Yeah, I'm just I'm not really focused on it right now, honestly. I'm just like because early in the year, my my plan was you know after you know as the trade guy say wasn't planning to trade me, so I'm just like okay, just yep. betting on myself this year, uh, play the year out, and I believe you know what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, and I was like whatever it is I have to go through, and I always use this saying like I'll do a chin up, chest out, sunsets like no regrets, just always looking forward, nothing nothing behind, and just focusing on um, now, the moment, and doing everything that I can. And I feel like if I do that, control everything that I can control and not worried about all the outside noise, everything else will take care of itself. And I'm just in that position. I'm comfortable where I'm at. And that's my focus right now is just being the best Raven I can be and the best teammate I can be uh, for those guys out there on the field. Yeah, my question on that front is, you know, how much since you've been here for a month, how much more has it made you say, you know, Oh yeah, this is the place I want to be long term. Has it has it increased your desire to be here long term? Because we have a lot of salmon. Okay, it's not going <laughs> to run out. Okay, crab cakes can also be put on the table. I'm just saying, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't represent Eric DeCosta, but I'm just saying, I'll give you some crab cakes, you know, and salmon. So, I mean, yeah, like, does it has your time here, your first month here, increased your desire to say, yeah, this is the place I want to be for a while. Yeah, man, like, you know, since I've been here, you know, like, even from the first day that I came in, it's just, like, how everyone um, everyone works around the building, how, you know, they allow you to be a pro around here, and it's not like, you know, no one's babying you or doing things like that, and I look forward to things like that, just being able to be a pro, do the things you love, and, you know, put ball first, because that's what's the most important thing around here, yeah. and it's winning, and I feel like type of organization, from what I've seen and talking with the guys, you know, you bust your tail, do things the right way around here, and you know they, they reward those type guys so you know I'm just grateful to be here and I'm I'm very excited for all that is to come in store and I think there's just so many great things that uh, we have in store but I'm just more so in the moment right now yeah. and I think great things are going to come. Well I mean in the moment it's pretty great right now this team's looking pretty awesome obviously coming off a tough loss but you know in your time here do you feel like yeah you know what there's a lot of talk about offenses and the, the Mahomes of the world and those potent offenses but you know what defense and with the the, the 
players that we have on this defense, like defense can win championships, and this is a Super Bowl caliber team. Oh, without a doubt about it. And I think that starts with one game at a time, uh, being in the moment. And I think we have a heck of an offense, too, because, you know, when it get late in the year, cold, people don't want to hit the stop, stop in the run <laughs> yep. and things like that. And I think, you know, Lamar can do so many special things with the ball. And I think we do what we need to do on defense and keep getting that guy opportunities with the rock in his hand. He can do special things. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's going to be a weekend and week out thing. And if we do that, the sky's the limit. The last thing for me here, Roquan, something that – in addition to the football stuff we're talking about that has impressed me so much with you, it seems like you're at every community event. Like you, since you've been here, I, I don't know if you'd ever spent any time in Baltimore before you got here. I'm guessing probably not much, if at any. <laughs> no. But the, you get here and every community event you're there. And it seems like that giving back attitude is just part of who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I truly believe in uh, giving back uh, and myself growing up in such a small town, you know, rural town in southwest Georgia, literally nothing to do there. So I know how it is sometimes for kids, you know, that may not have this or may just be looking forward to like one little thing, maybe having an opportunity to meet like this professional player. Because I remember like little things when I when I got to meet my first professional player, it was just like, man, wow, I'm in the fifth grade. I'm like, this is crazy. Like a guy had got drafted in like the seventh round from my uh <laughs> <laughs> high school and I'm like just so stoked and excited and like just being able to see things like that and just knowing the type of impact you can have on kids and also just being able to do things uh for people that you know can never repay you in a sense and it's like you're in a moment right now where and you have the platform to do so many amazing things so why not do that and why not give things back to the game the game that's given so much to me so I feel like I can get out and do so many great things in the community with the platform that I have and I'm just excited and it's been amazing here and yeah I'm ready to make an impact on the community awesome, awesome. well thank you so much man we look forward to uh, watching you both on and off the field for a very long time so thank you so much man crab Absolutely. cakes on me buddy <laughs> <laughs> All right, great stuff from Roquan. Just really enjoyed talking with him, getting to know him a little bit. And, uh, man, he's been a great fit for this team. So uh, before we continue, we want our listeners to know that the sports landscape is always changing, and this year is no different. DraftKings is the leader in daily fantasy sports, and it still has daily fantasy contests running for those who are looking to have skin in the game. It's simple. Every player has a salary associated with drafting them. You assemble a lineup of players, and then you try to stay under the salary cap as you sit back and you watch your points pile up. Now you know how to play. Sign up today using the DraftKings app that you can download and use the promo code FLOCK when you sign up. So go ahead and get that done today. Download the DraftKings app and use the promo code FLOCK. All right, well, Garrett, do you want to preserve a piece of history from a very special Ravens game? I would love to. That you're watching live? I would love to. I knew you would. Uh, Well, now you can. Go to Ravens Auctions in the Ravens app to get that special collectible item for the Ravens fan in your family. If it's a game a game used ball from the game you're watching, or a game used jersey from your favorite player, like Rick one, uh, helmets, gloves, pants, or even a game used towel. Ravens Auctions has it all. Check out the Ravens Auctions in the Ravens app today. Ravens Auctions powered by Metabilia.com. I O, and then also it's holiday season, so this is gift time. It is. It is. It is gift time. So don't wait till the last minute. Do not wait. Shopping. Do not wait till the last minute. Here's a great gift for all the wine lovers out there. Mm. Winning drives the official wine brand and club of the Baltimore Ravens. We have a special promo code for non-members for the holidays. Visit winningdrive.com and use the code holidays holiday fifteen to get fifteen percent off premium Napa Valley wines. And that's a perfect gift for your loved ones this holiday. So that's our oh, wine I would club. love that gift. I would love that. So if anyone's looking to give me a gift, uh, you can go ahead and get on Fairwinds. And use uh, the promo code. Though. You got to use the promo code Holiday Fifteen. Okay, <laughs> yeah. winning drive. Anyway, yes. Roquan Smith. Now that we have an hours long of commercials out. Yes, um, Roquan Smith is great. Yeah, I love that dude. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, if the Ravens can keep him PQ here for a long time, watch out. Yeah, look, that I think would be so fun. I, totally. Um, but like, for kind of like taking the Roquan mentality here of living in the moment. Yeah. Who knows how long it goes? I hope it's a long time. Enjoy the ride. But I'm enjoying the ride while it's here. If it is just the rest of the season, whatever it is, like I hope he's here for a long time. Yeah. But if what whatever, however many games he plays here, like you can see the difference that he makes. And I think that I know that Sunday's game wasn't the result that he or anybody wanted, but I I still, like I said to him, I still think that this is a really good defense, a Super Bowl-caliber defense, um, 
and he is kind of an anchor in the middle of it. Like yep. he, he, I just think he's he changes so much with this group. I really do. Um, yeah. And we've seen that in in limited action so far. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, let's be honest too. And I've gained more appreciation for this since the, in the days following the Jags game. Trevor Lawrence was kind of out of his mind. I mean, he kind of had an out of his mind day. Mm-hmm. And so, like, like you're saying. I've been high on the defense all along, and that has not changed for me one bit. And Marcus Williams coming back is going to be big. Yeah, look, look, on, on just on Trevor Lawrence, like that was one of the things that scared me about this game. That that game, you're right. The, the Trevor Lawrence factor. It's like number one overall pick who somehow wasn't getting any shine. Right, and also like not only was he not getting shine, but he was kind of like just getting dragged a little bit. Like, is this is he good? Like, that was kind right. of like, is he was he worth <clears throat> right. the number one overall pick? Should they have taken Justin Fields? You know, Chicago, we're talking about him. Right. Is Justin Fields better than Trevor Lawrence? That was kind of like part of the conversation out there. And I was like, I don't know. Trevor Lawrence, to me, is still good. And I'm kind of still scared. I'm a little yeah. scared of him. That so, was like straight Clemson Trevor Lawrence yeah. that we saw. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this week... A different situation, um, and that you have a veteran quarterback, not a young quarterback, um, who's been very good in his career, hasn't had a good season this year, right. but still scares me a little bit. And that he has been, uh, you know, a Super Bowl winning you never quarterback. Never know when Russ can cook. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like I, I don't he gets like the right ingredients. Yes, has a little sous chef. Yes, I think that there's potential there, um, and so that like scares me a little bit for this game. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is the game the Ravens should win, but. I think, as we saw against the Jags, you don't win all the games that you're supposed to win necessarily, right? Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that you can just chalk it up as a dubs. Yeah, it's not a guarantee by any stretch. Right? We like to play the dubs game, but in reality, it doesn't really work like that. Yeah. And so uh, this, this I hope, and I think it has potential to be a get-right game for the Ravens. Come back home. You know, you're playing a little bit of a wounded Broncos squad. Uh, and I think the Ravens know they have to play a whole lot better than they did against the Jags and will be very determined to do so. Yeah, well, I mean, this is, as you said, this is a game that the Ravens should win. There's going to be a lot of emotion going into this game, coming off a tough loss. Yep. Also, it's the uh, Marshall Yonda is going to be back in the house. This is the Ring of Honor game for him, so he's going to go into the Ring of Honor, which should be kind of a, a great moment for him, and yep. it'll be great to see him and his family uh, when they come back for this game. Um, you know, I think, to me, like... I'm really curious to see how the offense responds. Like, we spend a lot of time talking defense today with Roquan as our guest. I think we both agree that the defense is really good. I think this offense has been sputtering of late, um, and it's kind of a question who's going to step up from week to week. It's mm-hmm. been a different running back. It's Kenyon Drake one week. It's Demarcus Robinson. It's Josh Oliver. Who is it going to be? Um, right. And is it going to be a different guy every week? And is it going to be good enough to win is yep. the question. And and so I think this offense is finding itself a little bit right now. It's you know there's yeah. been some injuries there, some guys coming in and out of the lineup. <laughs> you know I just think it's finding itself a little I, bit I, right now. I keep waiting, and it was interesting listening to the CBS broadcast uh, against the Jags, in which they had talked to Greg Roman in pre-production meetings, and they they conveyed that Greg was saying like I want to get Lamar Jackson hot. That yeah, was that was the takeaway for them, and meaning like. He wanted to throw the ball more. Like, I think the Ravens feel like in order to reach the goals that they have in mind, which are is winning a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. this offense has to play better. And they're going to need Lamar Jackson to play at a very high level, especially considering what he has around him right now. Yeah. You know, the loss of Bateman, the running back situation, you know, with J.K. not being fully back and, and all that that you would have hoped for. Like, Lamar Jackson's the best player on the team. Or, or, or the offense, whatever. He's yeah. a superstar, right? And, like, the Ravens feel like they need Lamar Jackson at a superstar level, and they need to help him get to that superstar level in order for them to reach a Super Bowl, and I would agree with that. And, like, I'm I'm waiting because you know it's in there for that Lamar Jackson monster game. Like, he's been playing, I think, well, and uh, but we all know there's another level to Lamar Jackson that we've seen many times, and I can't wait for him to uh well, to see that. I think that we you see and I think this has been kind of the case with this team in in large measure for for this season. Like you see spurts of it but yeah. you got to put it together as consistently as an offense for four quarters and yep. as defense. It's like, you know, when the offense gets it together, starts moving the ball and also the defense has a fourth quarter letdown. Yeah. You know, so like that stuff can can just play together. You know, I think is a, is a key piece. In terms of getting Lamar hot, you know, Lamar did have his highest passing grade by Pro Football Focus this season. Exactly. So like, you know, they didn't the offense didn't have a huge 
day necessarily, especially in the red zone. I mean, that's what it comes down to is the red zone success. Um, and I'll be curious this week if the Ravens roll out any wrinkles like in the red zone. You know, I think that like there's going to be a lot of a lot of focus on like that. there's like it's kind of like you know when the defense struggles and then all of a sudden you have a, a lead late. It's and then everyone's like, all right, you're gonna you're gonna handle it. And for several games they did do that. Um, and so like if it's the first quarter of this game, you march down the field and you get to the ten yard line, everyone's gonna be like, all right. Let's see oh, it. for sure. Are you going to, are you going to, is it going to be more of the same from absolutely. last week? Or are you going to be able to punch it in? And I think that that could go a long way in kind of setting the tone of the game. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. One small little note about the red zone stuff that I just, I think is worth mentioning because I did the, the Ravens I view kind of film breakdown on this is I think for the Ravens offense, there's a big difference in, in red zone where you land, right? Like first and 10, I think no, the course. first two yeah. are what first and goal from the 10. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a much different scenario because you run the ball there. Let's say you pick up four yards. Now you only have two more chances Mm -hmm. and it's hard to run in the red zone. So for like such a run centric offense, I think you get inside the whatever the previous play puts you at the three. Yeah. You got three cracks at it from the three. You have a much higher likelihood of converting than you do from the 10 when they're just dropping in zone coverage and just blanketing the end zone. Right. And they're saying, we know you have to throw it pretty much try to find an opening, it's going to be tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just think, like, where you land in the red zone also impacts that. And I know that's a small detail. No, I, I agree. I, 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 I've joked in the past that, like, my least favorite situation is first and goal from the 10. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> it's exactly. the worst. And that's, like, where they landed both of the, I think, both the first two red zone trips. Yeah. Um. So, anyway... I do think there's going to be a lot of pressure once they get in the red zone. And, and Key to the game, avoid <laughs> first and goal from the 10. Exactly, you don't want that. I'll take first and goal from the 9. Yes. Um, you know, I, I do think that let's let's not sleep on the Broncos' defense, by the way. They have some players mm-hmm. on that defense. Like some some now I un, they already traded away one of the rest yeah, Bradley Chubb, pressure, yeah, right. Bradley Chubb, but like that this defense is, can still play. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, like we said on offense, like they've struggled and Russ has not been previous Russ, but like Cam Sutton, Jerry Judy, if he comes back this week, like they have some playmakers on offense too. So it's not like this is not a team they have talent, right? Like this was a, a team that a lot of people thought was going to go to the Super Bowl this year before the season they haven't played up to that expectation yeah but like you also can't sleep on the talent yeah i I agree um so like as you said this is a game that i think is really important to the ravens like they've their their margin for error has been minimized now by losing this game to jacksonville cincinnati is right there it's tie record you, you lose this game then it's like are we making the playoffs for sure right you right. know, like that's that's kind of the territory you're in right now. You yeah. win this game, it's like, all right, we're good. You yeah, know, Jack, Jacksonville, that was a blip on the radar. We're yeah, back. I think I think Size that like them up, you know, I I think that like I think it's always this way, but it just seems more this year that like the swings of like positivity and negativity after every win and loss like are magnified, and and maybe that's just because I'm living in it. I don't yeah. know, but that's it just bias, it just seems like like after every loss, it's like the sky is falling, and after. Particularly every loss, you know, every, <laughs> I would say, and and but if you win on Sunday, all that stuff is forgotten, and you're just moving ahead. And I think that you feel pretty good about where you are. I agree with you totally. Yeah, I mean, this a win here would be really big for yeah. momentum, and I think just the the emotions, the feelings around the team. So, get ready to buckle up for the mile high. Well, it's not at mile. High. <laughs> it's at home. It's, it's at, at the home. bank. It's at the, it's bank. At the bank. The boo. Redemption, get back on the right track. Woo!